What's up there, Kisami? Tom and Zeus, episode 11 of Shout It Out Loudcast, aptly titled Hooligan. Tom, how the hell are you? I'm doing great, Zeus. In a little more than 48 hours, we will be in our seats waiting for, not Kiss, the unemployed painter. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Ex exactly. That's pretty much the only reason I got the tickets. Yeah, I know. J Same yeah, just here. to see, just to see him. So, no, how's life? Go it's great, great. What's going on? You know, I'm just getting excited, man. I, it's finally here. I can't believe it. We're getting excited. I, I, I'm with you, buddy. Yeah. I, I can't tell you guys. So we have tickets to go see Kiss at Mohegan Sunday, Ugh. Mohegan Sun, on Saturday. We both got rooms. Tommy was smart and did his ahead. Me, I had a scramble, but I did get them, Tommy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So I am bringing my young 10-year-old daughter, and she's going to see Kiss for the first time. Uh, I'm not sure she's excited to see Kiss for the first time. She's more into pop music. But I am very, very curious to see what she's going to say after this concert. This is the equivalent of, you know how we always make fun of Paul, like when 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 when, when he says, you know, you're going to like this song. Psycho Circus is a hit. You're going to like this. This is what you're doing with your daughter. You're going to like Kiss. <laughs> I'm taking you to see them. <laughs> I don't care. Kiss is a concert that she'll be entertained one Absolutely. way or the other. Absolutely. So she, she, I mean, that's the whole thing. If you don't even like the music, you're going to love the show. Yeah. yeah right? and, I'm, and then on Tuesday, we're going, me and you are going to the garden in Boston. With you're and, I'm bringing... and, I'm, and I'm taking my 14 year old son to his first show. Now yep. he now now he he is legitimately excited. He's excited. He, he likes Kiss. Yeah, yeah. Now now at least he's... in front of you, he does. Well, well, no. This is funny because he sounds like uh, those people that Paul talks about in Extreme Close Up. He was telling somebody at school, <laughs> and somebody said, "You're a jerk." <laughs> he goes, "Yeah, I'm going to see. I'm going to the Kiss concert," and somebody's like. Oh, like the Kiss 108 concert? <laughs> and he's like, no, no. That's the a radio show, a radio station in Boston that plays pop hits. And they do, right, and they do like a summer tour thing. He goes, yeah. no, 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 Kiss the band. And they're like, Kiss is terrible. And I'm, I'm like, oh, man, poor Michael. <laughs> you know, your best friend thinks you're a jerk because you like Kiss. <laughs> hey, we're best friends. I love you. I love you too, buddy. You're a I jerk. I like the band Kiss. <laughs> what? You're a jerk. <laughs> Why would someone think you're a jerk? Like, why would someone say that? Oh. Maybe they think your taste sucks. Why would they think you're a jerk? It's not like you <laughs> punched an old lady crossing the street. Why, why does that make you a jerk if you like a certain band? Oh, so, it's just oh. a good, good old Paul Stanley. Oh, God. Oh. When we get a chance, we bring up extreme close-up. So, always, always. So life is very exciting for us, and that's why we will be talking about next episode. Yep. Um, the uh, Kiss concert, we're seeing two of them. And then yep. we might have a very big surprise in the summer to go do a little traveling and seeing them again in Virginia Beach. So we are very pumped. Um, so besides that, what's going on in the Kiss world? Uh, well, I mean, we got a little, a little bit of new. I mean, like we always say every week, the tour is rolling on. No controversy, which is great. Right. Um, so we got a little bit of news here. So... Uh, one of our all-time favorites, Chris Jericho. Oh, we loved Chris Jericho. Huge Kiss fan. Huge he was fan for he, me, too. Well, well, yeah. Well, you're and Fozzie. Yeah. Well, you're a jerk because you like wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him when he was in WCW before he even came. All right. And save, Raw became all right. Jericho. All right. Save that for the wrestling podcast that you do by yourself. <laughs> and him and The Rock went at each other. It was awesome. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, Go ahead. So, Shoot. So, so Jericho was on um, probably the most popular and well-known Kiss podcast that we have come to love over the years. Three sides of the coin. Shout out to those guys. Um, Jericho was a guest on there, and oh my God, Jericho let it fly. He was asked questions about, um, you know, the accusations that have been going on about Paul Stanley, you know, lip syncing, backing tracks, et cetera, et cetera. And Jericho was just unleashed. A um, couple quick quotes, you know, 
He said, uh, Paul Stanley has nothing to prove to anybody. He's one of the greatest rock and roll singers of all time. I think that's something that anyone would say. I'd much rather have him use the technology that's available to not sound like he's hurting himself, which then makes me not enjoy the show as much. I've said the exact same thing. Said the exact same thing. A um, couple other quick quotes he had. Let me tell you how things work. More people do this than others. I'm sure of it because I've seen it happen. And then he goes down and quotes um, a couple bands that, that you know, that use it. Um, Ozzy, Def Leppard, probably some Van Halen. Um, he said, despite the fact that Kiss is probably using backing tracks to enhance Stanley's voice, Jericho says the Kiss frontman, quote, always gives it his all. The only problem was the last couple of tours. Um, his voice, you know, kind of wasn't up to snuff and you could hear him hurting himself. We don't want that. He doesn't have to prove anything to anyone. Yeah, so, I, I listened to it. It was yeah. great. I mean, he went passionate. He said exactly what he said. He's like, in the end, when Kiss plays Madison Square Garden and I'm friends with them, maybe I'll get tickets, but I'm getting front row because that's the last time we'll see it. He's like, the who? The Stones. Um, who was the other one? Paul McCartney. That is never going to happen again. Yep. So if you come around, like you said, the Stones come around, I go see them because I'll never see this again. Yep. Same thing with Kiss. He's like, Paul Stanley cares about the band. So does Gene. And he's like, the same thing with ACDC. Even when they didn't have um, Brian Johnson, they had uh, Axel fill in. Do you think Angus would go out there if they sucked and they were shitty? He cares about this shit. Right. They're not going to go out this shit and be, uh, be shitty. So he's like, I'd rather have Tommy. Tommy is an awesome guitar player. They, they are so much better now playing. And he makes Paul and, you know, him and Eric make Paul and Gene's life so much easier. Yeah. And he's like, I'm never going to get a chance to see them. So every chance I can, I'll enjoy it. I would rather see them the way they are now than not have them. And he's like, to those assholes that are like, no, they shouldn't go out there. Like, so I can't see Kiss the way I like Kiss. Yeah. I got in Kiss into the 80s. But Bruce was there. Kiss wasn't my guy. And there are other guys that got into them when, you know, Tommy, the younger kids, knew when Tommy's been in there for fucking over a dozen years. Mm -hmm. So they know only Tommy. So now Tommy's not allowed to play. And, you know, it's just he said everything right on the head. It, you was, know, it, the, it, it was it was perfect. And to hear somebody with as much, um, you know, as much public, you know, pull, you know, as Jericho does, you know, being the wrestler that he is, having the podcast, being in Fozzy, having him come uh, out the and, first undisputed WWF champion. Okay. <laughs> but having him having having him come out and so passionately talk like a Kiss fan. He was talking like a Kiss fan. You know, and and it was You it know was, one of the best things he said though. Finish your story. I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, I was just going to say it was it was just awesome to cuz cuz he sounded the way me and you have been talking about who are these, you know, who are you to tell me that I can't go and enjoy Kiss right now? Because and he said being, like God bless these people, but he said wrestling fans, Star yeah. Wars fans, and fucking Kiss fans. Nailed it. Love everything, but they fucking love to bitch. Yep, absolutely. Like you, you, you ruin it. You can't, and they overanalyze, over tech, like, shut the fuck up. Yep, absolutely. You know? And he's like, if these guys want to go out there and perform as long as they want to, who gives a shit? Fuck off. Yep. You don't like it? Don't go. We're going to go, and we're going to have a good time. Fuck and, off. And I'll tell you right now, he he Jericho didn't mention this, but I'll just say this as a little side here. Uh, Stuart, who we refer to, he is full of shit. If he thinks all these bands that have been around from the 80s are not using some kind of backing, there is nobody out there right now. Yeah, he, I've heard him praise Def Leppard. Def Leppard oh, uses so here. much overdubbing and backing tracks. It's ridiculous. You think they're playing Animal and all that other shit without playing something in the background? You think they're or playing Armageddon you, it with all the think, layered backup tracks? Come well, on. Even, 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 let's think of the chorus to Photograph. I mean, you know. Hey, come on. Who cares? I'm not Ex bitching about it. Exactly. Exactly. But my point is when people pinpoint Kiss, like, dude, nobody from the 80s is plugging in their guitars and playing. There's, they're all getting some help. And that's great. Here's, here's something I want to ask you. So let's say there was no controversy about Paul Stanley doing this. Yep. Do you think fucking Stuart wouldn't be bringing up something up to bitch about? Of course he would. He would be bringing up what he always brings up. That Paul, oh, it's that, a half a cover man. Yeah, he'd be bringing up that Tommy is the spaceman and, and Eric's the cat man. Because he's already brought that up. Okay. He looked for something. So all of a sudden now, 
because there was this accusation because Kiss fans are so over the top, um, you know, analytical about this stuff. Yeah. All of a sudden now, every time on Twitter, this is his crusade now. These people are playing live as though to always to fucking marginalize Kiss for not doing this. Yeah. All of a sudden now, this is your big crusade. Right. Buddy, half of the artists that you have on your show, and more than half do this. I don't hear you confronting these people to their face. Perfect example. Oh, Next, Molly Cruz, Elise admits, shut the fuck up. Okay, hey, you know what? That's a perfect example. Do, do you want to go see Kiss and have Paul Stanley sound like Vince Neil sounds like right now? Or David Lee Roth? Come oh. on. That's bullshit. What, so you can say, oh, it's all natural. Yeah, it's all natural, and it sounds like garbage. There's nothing wrong with needing a little <laughs> He's always sounded like garbage live. Yeah. No, per- perfect example. Real quick, next month, who are we going to see again? We're going to see Tesla. Oh, awesome. One of, our, one of our all-time favorite bands, and we're going to see them in a real small venue, and we're going to see them up close. Stuart loves to praise Tesla, as I do and you do, about yeah. they're live. They plug in and play. I will guarantee to you when we see them in that small venue, you will be able to tell that they're getting some help, and no one's going to care. No one in that venue is going to care, including me and you. I won't care. Not at all. I love them. They kick ass. Of course. It's so, going to be amazing. Yeah, that was a great, great interview. And maybe one day when we can get Jericho on, I can pick his brain about Kiss some more because uh, I, I, I'm a, I'm a huge Jericho fan, whether it's wrestling, his music, or you know him talking about Kiss. And he's just an enlightened person. Yep. And he's just like us, a fan. Uh, yep. So I find that stuff really interesting. Yep. Um. So the other thing that I thought about to talk about was that article in Guitar World. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure. It's very repetitive like the previous article from them was. But it had some questions and answers about, you know, they were asking Gene and Paul some stuff. But again, Gene, you know, he has to bring up about Ace and Peter. You know, um, you know they got their three chances. They're, you know, three times, drugs and alcohol. Buddy, stop bringing it up. We know about that. Um, you know, why do you beat this dead horse? And, you know, it's just you're antagonizing. Does he not get it? Does not anybody tell him this? No one is questioning whether those guys had problems in the past. No one's bringing that up. Who gives a fuck? Look, but, it's you know, not- he's always like, oh, can, um, you know, I've been, he, he quotes, he said, oh, I've been straight for a million years. Terrific. Have a good life. Would we welcome Ace or Peter to jump on stage for a song or two? Of course. Could we depend on Ace or Peter to do a full set night after night? Not on your fucking life. <laughs> Why do you have to say it like that? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm just. I, I, I'm laughing because it's ridiculous. Like, look, we know we know Gene is a is a massive. You remember the last time what happened after he said this? Yeah, I mean, we know Gene is a massive egomaniac, and I think that I think when he piles on ace and peter it kind of just kind of it just pumps him up that he's the record i agree i don't think ace is doing half the shit now ace will come back and say i've been playing and touring fucking all see all year long with my band i would then say yeah your band is carrying you yeah exactly all the guitarists playing your shit can you be the only one up there playing and singing no Uh, i don't know no um so look it's just you're poking at him again. There was no need. They're not stirring shit up with you. Why are you stirring up with them? Agreed. And then he goes on to talk about Vinnie Vince. <laughs> oh. He sued us 14 times, you know, and lost. <laughs> Speaking of so he's never welcomed. He said, Bruce, yeah, we'd love to have Bruce, you know, and he talks about him and you know, and Ace on the tour. Great. So then why don't you just leave it positive, buddy? And then they ask Paul, and then you know what bugs me is like Paul when they talk about the songs again and he sucks going into you know if we play different songs um, you know if we have a 18,000 seat arena and we play different songs we would have 17,990 people go what the fuck was that what was that that is so annoying such garbage that's Paul being completely tone deaf and not knowing who his audience is. He's just – no one is correcting him. No one's in the right. interview going, Paul, that's not true. Your no. fans know way more all your songs. I re- and he goes, I remember going to see the Stones once at Wiltern in L.A. They did a whole night of rarities. 
it was pretty damn boring. Because they did a whole fucking night of rarities. Yeah. You okay? We're not asking you to play the fucking B-side of Psycho Circus. We're the- asking you to play a song here or there that's rarity. And the fans would love, half the fans would know exactly what it is. And because it's a good song, the other half would like it too. We're not even referring to a true rarity. We're just referring to songs that they don't play live. Okay, would you consider Plaster Caster a rarity? No. Something, I mean, we're not, I'm not asking you to play almost Fans would human. would lose their mind if they did a live album and did Mr. Speed on there. Right. They'd eat that up. Right. I mean, it's just... Whether it's, you go it, from Firehouse to Black Diamond, Heaven's on Fire to Hello Hallelujah, Psycho Circus to come on... Dude, get Psycho Circus the fuck out of that list, buddy. I, I'm telling you right now, I've, I think I said this on our last episode, I'm not sure... They they did they got rid of hide your heart and put in call and Doctor Love. I'm telling you right now, the next shoe to drop is say yeah because some of the reviews that I'm reading and some of the other podcasts that we listen to talking about their personal experiences at the show, they're saying that as much as they love say yeah and me and you love that song, mm-hmm. they're saying that you can there is a noticeable difference in the crowd when that song comes on, and Paul and Gene and everybody running that tour they're aware of that. That's why they got rid of hide your heart. When the crowd starts to quiet down and people start going to the bathroom, that's I'm telling you, I love Say Yes. Is Hide Your Heart is very unlike Kiss. It's like a storytelling song. You know? So okay, but I mean, so is it's say- just a storytelling song. Where Say Ya yeah has that chorus. Okay, which but it's catchy. But it's also yeah, a but yeah, it, but it, yeah. but it's all but it's also a very down temp it's not a very uplifting, upbeat song. I I, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited to hear them no, play. But I'm just saying that chorus makes a difference. Where it says "Hide your heart" is like a story. Like you no, know. you're right. You're right. Um, that, that's my prediction. But anyway, yeah. So, gee, Tom, anything else going on in our uh, shout out loudcast news this past week or so? Oh, this has been a busy week for us, huh? What do we got Go. going on? Go on. We got the makeup madness tournament that kicked into gear here. Oh, my God, that was chaos. Uh, So at the time of this recording, uh, we've completed the Spaceman, Demon, and Starchild brackets. Um, By the time you hear this, the entire first round will be done. Um, It's been awesome. My God, the feedback, the interaction, the comments. I mean, we want to thank everybody out there. It's been amazing. We are so excited that people are into this as much as we are when we came up with the idea. I think it's fucking awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I um I'm quite disappointed on some of the polls, but that's why they're there. Yep. yep. Um I uh the feedback is just been I, I mean it's just been awesome. So, so far, the, you know, the followers we've started to pick up, yep. the downloads of the podcast has gone through the roof. Yep. Um we're super excited. Yep. And more importantly, we just want to do something fun. Yeah. And we think that we found, you know, something there that people like and um, and people are happy about. You've had already in the in this poll some surprises, Tom. Have you picked up anything from the tournament that you've that yeah, kind so, of surprised you? So far, one massive upset that I am really blown away that I thought this particular song would do damage and they got knocked out in the first round. Number three, I Love It Loud, lost to number 14, Let Me Go, Rock and Roll. A song that you do not like. I, I, that, the only thing I can think of, <laughs> the only thing I can think of is what we said last week, fatigue factor. I, I don't know. I can't explain that. Let Me Go, Rock and Roll has such great guitar work. It does. And they're playing it live now, and they hadn't played it live for a while. And that so might people be- people probably like, you know what? I love that song. It's on You're a right. live, you know? You're right. And, and, I, and I love it loud. They Kiss has beaten that into the ground on all their recent tours. Yeah. So, um, no, other I, than I, that, I, other than that, not, you know, pretty much everything is, um, you know, there have been a couple. I mean, um, you know, we had, uh, what was the other one there that was kind of close there? There were some ch- real close calls. Oh, my uh, God, I thought yeah. War Machine was going to go down. Yeah, uh, rip it, um, rip it out, edged out, plastic caster. That was a close one. I was, I yeah. Was, I, I love rip it out. I was a little bit surprised by that. Yeah. Um, um I want you destroyed radioactive. I, I couldn't believe that. I uh, that. Ugh. 
I'll tell you right now, just for the record, I was one of the people that voted for radioactive. So did I. <laughs> oh, oh, so those so are the two, do I. So yeah. those are the two votes that got. <laughs> yeah, we got the only two. Um, you know, what was another one that was kind of surprising that really took off? Um, shock me, destroyed I. Yeah. Um, oh, take me, barely beat watching you. That almost went into overtime. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't. I was on watching you. Okay. Um. Uh, I was made for loving. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Uh, who was it? I was made just barely beat charisma. Well, it was it was I would that something happened with that because when that started, I was made for because each poll goes for forty eight hours. I was made for loving. You got out to a roaring start, and then all of a sudden the charisma people tried to pick up the steam, and it was just too late. Yeah, and Mr. Speed barely snuck by All American Man. Yeah, that was surprising. Yep, a lot of these guys are just random, like poor. Wouldn't you like to know me? A song that a couple people had as their number one pick. Yep. Yep. Fucking a bounce right off the bat to Colgin. Well, like we said in the, in the previous episode, the matchups were tough. I mean, and again, as of right now, and I know that by the time you hear this, it will be over. As of right now, with what? A little a little over, what, 12 to 15 hours left? And again, you're right. Like, rock and roll all night is up 51 to 49 over room service. <laughs> okay, number one seed, rock yeah. and roll all night. Which Not most up of against us- Come On and Love Me or friggin' Detroit Rock City. It's up against room service. Now, there are two things at hand here. I think what we talk about, fatigue factor, or there's there's more Russian hacking in the election. That's <laughs> That's the only thing, because I am, I, I can, th- that almost has, what, 80 votes or something, and it's tied? It's, it, it's I don't know what's worse, that R- Rock and Roll Night doesn't have that many votes, or that Room Service has that many votes. That's what, I mean, I love Room Service, but I'm, that, something's wrong. I do wrong too, there. but there's a reason it's number 16. Yeah, something's, I, <laughs> Something's wrong there. I can't get. I, I can't wrap my head around that. I, I mean, if 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 room service ends up winning, that will be just be. Woo, be that, That's a what do you call bracket buster? Bracket buster for sure, absolutely. Oh, yeah, but yeah, and then, um, and then we wanted to kind of just give a couple shout outs, some interesting comments and stuff, right? So first off, we meant uh, we want to mention another Kiss podcast um, that we're huge fans of. That if you're listening to this, you, chances are you have listened to a pot of thunder. Um, if you're a kiss fan, you love that. Now uh, last year, they did a similar kind of, uh, of, tur- of a tournament thing. Um, and we want to mention them and give them a shout out because they actually retweeted our tournament um, and commented on it. And somebody out there actually thanked pot of thunder for the tournament and pot of thunder graciously said, no, you guys need to thank the guys from shout it out Loudcast." Um, so that was pretty cool, you know, to be referenced and mentioned by one of the big boys in the kiss podcast world. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That was pretty cool. Yeah. No, I mean, it, you know what? The kiss podcast world, whether it's PRC, whether it's shout it out loud cast, whether it's friggin' pot of thunder, um, three sides, three sides of the coin and all the rest of them out there. Yeah. You know, it's like a family. Exactly. Everybody, everybody's cool with one another. It's not a competition. It's not. I listen to them all the time. You listen to them all the time. You're the one who got me into Kiss Podcasts. Yeah. You yeah. did. Yep. You do. You do. <laughs> that's what my, that's <laughs> went right to my head. <laughs> so then a, co- a, a couple other quick comments that kind of stuck out. Some of our uh, some of our uh, favorite right. Twitter favorite Twitter followers, huge, huge Kiss fans. We, were, we just want to give them a shout-out because they had some funny comments. So uh, Jack Skellington on Twitter, who uh, we, we love to follow. He's, he's a huge Kiss fan. He commented, he said, my bracket is so stained with sweat, tears, second thoughts, ugly cry face, and regrets that it's best if I just share my final two, which is Love Gun versus Sure No Something. Now, Zeus. Doesn't that kind of represent what all of us went through filling out the brackets? Every one of those is like, ugh, I, ugh. like, why does Mr. Speed have to be up against a good song? Can I put it against fucking Shandy? Right. Like, oh, can I change this around? To, oh, I didn't know that this song, this song can end up having to go against, you know, like, rip it out. This right. is bullshit. Yeah. It's, yeah, it, it sucks. It's tough. It goes to show you how good. The, the you know kiss songs are yeah 
And then I also got a comment because anytime we have any interaction with uh, with our at least my favorite uh, Kiss fan out there, and as I said before, the first undisputed WWF champion and Mongoose McQueen from Fozzy. <laughs> um, Jericho commented. And so what he said to us was, uh, um, no non-makeup songs. I can't participate. Nice little smiley face there. And we were like, no, we want you. Yep. And, um, you know, he always talks about it. He came into Kiss in the 80s. Yeah. And that's one of the things. You can like any form of Kiss, whatever. And those ones that came into Kiss in the 80s, that follow the you know the catalog afterwards. Those are the ones that aren't bitching about the shit. It's those yep. other people that are like, oh, I only like the makeup here. Okay, what yeah. the fuck. <laughs> um, and so anytime we get any comments from Chris, it's just Amazing. awesome. We're super fans. Yeah. Um, we think he's the best, and uh, love love hearing his comments about you know the rock industry itself, whether it's. Or wrestling, and at least I like hearing about wrestling and other stuff. So we're big, big fans of Chris Jericho. So anytime he comments or likes or retweets anything about us, we we get all we get a kick out of it. So yep, I got an, I got another fun one here from uh, another one of our funny uh, little Kiss tweet. Yeah, another huge Kiss fan. Um, and uh, we we love following him on Twitter because uh, he he will entertain us sometimes with his recordings of his guitar playing. But uh, Tom Dust had a great one. He took a screenshot of his completed bracket and he wrote, Hey, I think shouted out loudcast just defaced my votes. Did you do this Zeus? And it's a picture and it's a picture of his brackets with a big red X across it. And he wrote in huge black letters, just a boy, (laughs) which is, which is hilarious because we joked about that. Just a boy. So, yeah. So anyways, like you said, you know, just just some fun interaction. And that's what we want from people. Get You know, just get into it. And, and it's just kicking into gear now that you think you think these decisions on the first run are hard. It's going to get worse because now we got the big boys competing up against each other. Starting, that's right. Starting next so week. Keep so keep voting online, guys. Yep. The polls are open. Keep voting. And uh, let's have some fun with this. And I'm dying to see who answers. I know. And don't forget, as we previously mentioned. The winner will get our new minted Shout It Out Loudcast t-shirts. We, I literally just picked them up. Um, I have one. I am wearing it for this episode. Pretty awesome. Uh, Tom is trying to touch me through the screen. <laughs> I know he wants to. Yes. But, um, yes, we'll be wearing them to the concert coming up. Yep. Um, and they are fucking awesome. They did a great job on these two shirts. Yep. So we have them. If anybody's interested in them, we will be putting them up. We'll I think we're selling what is it, nineteen ninety five? Something sure. like that. Yeah. Sure. And uh, you know, we'll ship them out to you. Shipping not included. Um just <laughs> let us know if you're interested and uh, we'll set it up and ship yep. them out to you. These, sh- these shirts are awesome. But the winner of the actual tournament will get one, and we'll ship one out to you, buddy. Yep. Um, or young lady, whoever wins. So right. that being said, Tom, let's go on our uh, our main conversation today. And we called it Hooligan. And yes. why is that? Because it's the greatest song written by... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, this is, this is going to be Zeus's favorite episode. How many times did I text you this week and say, I'm so pumped about this episode? Yeah, I know. I know. How many? So, uh, pretty much every several. five minutes. Several. Put down several. several. He had several. Several. Um, yeah. So this is going to be the first in our series of kind of uh, uh, members. Member episodes. Yeah, member-specific episodes. Uh, today, we're going to kick it off with the original Catman. I hope that's not controversial. Peter Chris. That's right. My favorite. Also known as George Peter John Chris Cola. <laughs> <laughs> who is the oldest member of KISS. Yes. This year will be 74. Dear God. <laughs> that is friggin' insane. Yeah, yeah. But he still looks good. God bless him. He looks like an old Italian Nana right now. Like, 
<laughs> he looks like a cool guy. He's like somebody he, you'd want to know. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to know <laughs> Peter? Yeah, I would. I would love to know Peter. He's great. <laughs> so tell us about Peter Chris. Peter! <laughs> That's from Tom. That's in the middle of rock and roll all night from the cool. unplugged version. And all of a sudden, Paul Stanley goes, Peter! <laughs> It's so ridiculous. Go ahead, go ahead. So no, so real quick, so real quick. So yeah, so he was born in 1945. So um, he's obviously a New Yorker. If you ever heard him talk, he's got like one of the most brutal New York accents. Probably about this as bad. New York. About as bad as our Boston accents are. Um. So we mentioned earlier. What accent? We don't have any accents. No. Who told not, you we have accents. No, none. None at all. Yeah. Right. Go half ahead. these people, half these people, probably can't even understand us. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, shoot. Go ahead, shoot, shoot. Um, so yeah, so um, drummer since you know musician since the uh, since he was a little kid, um, and we had mentioned this in one of our previous episodes about um, his idol uh, Gene Krupa, and he ended up studying under him. I, I can't <laughs> hear. Now, I can't and hear now, that and now, without thinking of that stupid YouTube video. We, I, dude, I do not want to promote that video because it's terrible. <laughs> Fuck you, Peter. Gene Trooper is rolling over in his grave thinking it's, that you trained him. It's Krupa. Fuck, yeah. Fuck you, Paul. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck you, Gene. <laughs> I am not promoting. Hey, we are not promoting those videos because they're uh, they're they're not they're not very nice. Um. So so Peter's first band. He was in a band called Chelsea. Oh, that's a terrible name. By the way, if you're if you know anything about Boston, you do not want to be named after Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because it's been fucking under receivership by the state like four or five times, where everybody in the city gets arrested for corruption. <laughs> Anyways, there's some local humor there. Um, so uh, Chelsea was a short-lived band that he was in. Then he was in what became Lips, another t- <laughs> Louis Lips. <laughs> Louis Rocco. <laughs> I was just gonna say so it's on Louis Rocco. Another terribly named band. Um but he was in that band with a very famous um non member of KISS by a man by the name of Stan Penridge. Um oh, is it Stan Pepperidge Farms cookies. Yeah, and the and Stan Penridge is famous for being um the co writer on pretty much all of uh Peter's uh, KISS hits. Yeah. Um, you know, most notably Beth, but uh also the you know, Hooligan Big Driver helped helped him write almost the uh I think pretty much his entire solo album. Um had a right. hand had a hand in Dirty Living. Um and then the other member of Lips, which this is pretty good trivia, at least for me, was a gentleman by the name of Michael Benvenga. Now, if that name doesn't ring a bell at all, it probably won't. Okay. If you're a diehard deep dive kiss fan, <clears throat> if you remember on the solo right. album, on the Kiss solo albums, each band member dedicated the album to each other. So, so Peter's album was dedicated to Ace, Paul, and Gene. But he also threw in Michael Benvenga's name, which I thought was actually pretty cool. And I, when I remember when I was younger, I'm like, who the hell? Who was this guy? <laughs> but it was the guy that was in his first real band. Um, so I thought that was kind of that's kind of neat trivia. Um, I hear you. And then. Uh, after after Lips kind of shit the bed as a band, um, Peter put an ad in the East Coast edition of Rolling Stone, and there's d- con- conflicting versions about the um, the ads. P- Peter claims that the ad said, uh, "Experienced rock and roll drummer looking for an original group doing soft and hard music." Um, the ad was answered by Paul and Gene. Um, they were already looking for members of the band. Ace was already added to the band, um, but uh, Gene has a different. Um, memory of the ad. Um, he said he it was in Rolling Stone, and he said, "Drummer available. We'll do anything." Now, that's a completely different ad, Gene. That's not anything that Peter said. So, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, would you wear a dress? Yeah, would you wear a dress? Would you, uh, you know, would, would, you know, would you wear makeup? All that shit. So, anyways, so Gene called him, uh, interviewed him, went to a club, saw him play, saw him sing, um, and the and rest became... is history. That's right. Yep. Right. So what do you have to say about your boyfriend, Peter Chris? Oh, it's the bomb. It's the mm. bomb. Just makes it. Look, 
I, I, I just, I just like the attitude, the whole like Italian New York attitude that he has. Um, he was no, the per, he, he was the perfect drummer for that band at that time. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect attitude, perfect sound, perfect style. Yeah, you know, yep. um, because they didn't really become a hard rock. Hard, they didn't really become like a hard, hard, hard band until Eric Carr, and then even more so with Eric Singer. They needed him in those 70s albums, I think. Yeah, because they were more of a rock and roll band. They right. They were a hard, like, heavy metal band. Exactly. Yep. Um, they yep. became that in the 80s. Right. Yep. So, And you hear yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say. So I thought he feel, fit their style. I thought he had, you know. It always bugs me that, you know, when we talked about this, we listened to the videos Extreme yep. close up. Oh, Eric. Oh, blue Peter Chris away. Oh, so much better. Draw oh, Terrell. Peter Chris. Like, I didn't realize how bad they shit on his playing. Yep. Again, it goes back to like, Paul, why do you shit on stuff that your fans really like? It almost makes them feel stupid for liking it. What are you talking about? You know how many drummers out there fell in love with Peter Chris's style? You know how many yeah. people out there love that stuff? He was awesome in the band. What are you talking about shitting on him? Now, if you want to say that we didn't know and he had so much help in the studio and this and that to get that stuff done, well, he still played live. I didn't oh, hear yeah. like it wasn't terrible when he played live. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. First of all, go back and listen to the first Alive, the uh, original Live. Listen, <clears throat> you, you, you might have to listen closely to kind of see what Listen to so, vodka and orange juice. Yeah. So you're hotter up, than hell, up. hotter than hell. The song. Oh, <laughs> so hot, hot, hotter than hell. The song. I can't friggin' stand. Yeah. If listen to the alive version, that is that is what I'm talking about when I talk about Peter adding something. He adds like a swing and a groove to that song that is not on the studio version. I'm telling you, it 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 makes the song ten thousand times better than the studio version. And is there anything cooler than a badass drummer that can sing? Exactly. Right. Oh. Right. He just added another. He wasn't just. And this is why I say it. Eric Singer. Yeah, he can sing. Yeah. Eric Carr. Yeah, he could sing. Peter Chris was a great singer. Yeah. He wasn't. And, ah, he can do it. Right. And he, and here's a question for you that I was thinking of as we were like kind of preparing for this um, for this interview and looking over some stuff. So, like I said earlier in the episode, like especially Gene and. Paul maybe a little maybe not as you know out out there with it you know egomaniacs very prideful look at all the great peter songs none of them became hits except for beth why do you think that is is as it did, did peter and gene did that have something to do with, with paul and gene like you look at like baby driver like dirty living like mainline get why why weren't those songs hits right I don't know. I mean, look, in Peter's mind, he seems like, I'll be honest, he seemed, he comes across defensive. Yeah. I mean, you obviously read his book, as I did. Of course. And it is a fucking awesome read. It's one of the best. Uh, Make Up to Break Up. Yeah. My Life in and Out of Kiss. Yeah. By Peter Chris. Great book. I, I love it. Um, I put that slightly ahead of Paul's in order of books. Um, so... You know, I think he, he comes across as a whiner and stuff like that. And, he does. And do I believe is. that he threatened to quit all the time? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, you know, human reaction is human reaction, right? You can notice it. So when they did the, like the, if you take, for instance, I'm going to go off on a different track here. Go ahead. When you, when you look at the Tom Snyder interview where Ace and Peter kind of took over. Yep. Remember Gene and Paul? Did they look like they were having fun? Oh, that's fa- they looked that, like that, it was so obvious. They that were episode off. That interview is fa- as as famous for Ace and Peter being crazy as it is for Gene being bullshit. And so and Paul too. Yep. So yeah, do I believe that Paul and Gene are really the brains behind the operation, and Peter can't write or do music like those two? Yeah, but he still contributes to the band, so don't minimize him. He right. brought a lot to them. And yeah, I bet you that um, Peter is defensive and stuff. No, his stuff isn't as good as those two guys, but I'm sure he brought some stuff to the table. Well, no, it's not. And of course, Black Diamond is one of Kiss's all-time biggest hits. 
Okay, it's not just the biggest hits. It's one of their best fucking songs. Well, that's what I mean. Okay, but then but then you look at their second album. You had Mainline and Strange Ways, two very different but very awesome songs. No one, those are like two of the deepest cuts that you'll see for Kiss. Yeah, Baby Baby Driver and Hard Luck Woman, two songs on one album, both great songs. Hard Luck Woman got some play, obviously that was on double mm-hmm. platinum. That's considered a hit, but like Baby Driver, that's an amazing song. Strange Ways, a real like gritty, like dark rocker. Like, I, I, it's just weird to me that like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like they let him write and record and sing, but they never. And and again, he's he's not, he's not you know for want because he's he put Beth in. That's you know people think of Peter Chris with Beth, but I don't know. I just feel like he should have gotten back. more. What is back? More you name it Beth. Otherwise, people are thinking you're playing for the wrong team. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about <laughs> shit. Talk... Dude, you just sounded like Ace right there. <laughs> when I said back, we should call it that. Um, yeah, that, yeah that, that's a conflicting story. Where the hell Beth got its name? I mean, anyways. Yeah. So let's talk about Peter Chris. So Peter Chris comes into the band, right? Yeah. They're starting off. You got, I say... Three songs right off the bat off the first album. Okay. You got him doing Nothing to Lose. You got well, him doing... The chorus. He sings... The, I mean, basically, Gene sings the first lyrics, and then Peter takes over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then you got um, Kissing Time, where oh. he has his lyric at the end, which you didn't even realize. I'm like, you don't. You must not have listened to that. That's... I mean, that, hey, that was so good. I made it a kiss lyric a, a couple episodes back. You know why? I, you know why I don't think I realized that because I don't think I ever got past the first five seconds. <laughs> 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 but I'll tell you what. I'll Ooh. tell you what. After listening to after listening to it, Peter's version, Peter's singing is the best part of that. So if he sang the whole song, I'd probably like it. You know, let's do it in Detroit. They all love to score. So baby, oh baby. What are we waiting for? Come oh, on. God. Brutal. And then he's saying probably the best song on that album. Black, Black Diamond. Diamond. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So this he comes out strong with them. Black Diamond is oh. obviously Paul's got the most melodic voice. Yep. Genius got a very unique, it's the demon voice. You know, we all know it, right? Sure. Gene, has, Gene has like two different voices. Yeah, he can do that or he can do uh, Yeah. Yep. We are oh, one. All right. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you Stop. Know, you know that song. That's a different type of Gene voice than, you know, God of Thunder. Right. Okay, so you got that. And then you got Peter, who's got that fucking awesome. I love raspy voices. That's great. Okay. And you got me. I can sing. I shock yeah. me. I shock me. Yeah. Um, so then they move on to the second album. Right, hotter than hell. Holy shit, he, he's he's on fire. He comes right back with "Strange Ways," great A song, which they basically throw his way because, you know, he's not writing his really his own lyrics. So, and he sing Ace does Ace like I'd rather give it to Peter, let Peter sing it. Oh, and that song, uh, that song Mainline, is awesome. one yeah. of my favorites. Great one. Yep. Oh. So, I mean, he's he's right on a roll. Just those top five songs. Boom. He's right off the bat. Yep. I mean, I, I know you don't not a fan of Kissing Time. But no. then we get into his third album. What do we got? We got Getaway. I love it. Right? Awesome song. But subtly, he contributes to, like, Love Her All I Can and She. Yeah. He adds that back and makes that depth, makes that sound, that chorus sound. Yep. And never mind the drumming in all these songs. Oh, forget we'll it. Listen it's to room service and all the songs like that. His drumming's awesome. We talked about that when we did the Dress to Kill so review. So underrated. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yep. So underrated. Yep. And so all of a sudden, they go and go listen to Alive. Tell me Peter Chris does not shine on Alive. Yep. His vocals are unreal. His drumming's unreal on that. Oh, yeah. Right? Kills it. Okay. Kills it. So what happens afterwards with Peter? We get into... The big one, right? Destroy it. They put in, why don't you just call it Beth and flip yeah. it over? Let's put it on the B side. So people were putting that on the album on and playing Beth for her and it became a hit. Thanks, Gene. Um, and he sings Beth, right? 
Yeah. Who there's so many conflicting stories about that. Yep. About, you know, uh Bob seeing hearing it, Bob Ezra and the producer, like, this is something great. We can make this work. And him and Peter doing it. And he beat him saying basically that the band was like laughing at him while yeah. he was singing. And he's like, and Ezra like kicked everybody out, you know? Yep. They weren't laughing at him after that. Yeah. Huge. Huge. Hit. He was talking about when he had to sing it live and like, you know, he, now he became part of the show. Maybe could have been the worst thing to happen to him. Cause then maybe his ego did get a little bit bigger than it should. He's like, now I'm in the front. He has the towel, the stool, <laughs> like the rose. Just, yeah. Yeah, like he just had, like he just went through a boxing match, Whew. and uh, and he sings this to the audience. God bless you. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's like one of the him on that stool with the rose and the towel. It's just one of the most iconic kiss things ever. And the what I used to think was the three on his back. <laughs> oh yeah, the right tail. Yeah, yeah. And yep. so, you know, you, you, you he he does Beth, and that takes off, and that you know, let's be honest, probably created a lot of the tension in the band now i'm bigger than i think i am and this and this and that and you guys are holding me back oh totally oh right? i agree but then but then they threw him a bone on the next album and we all know about the story about hard luck woman that paul wrote it for like a rod stewie who wanted to give them a song and peter's like hey you fucking asshole let me sing it yep i'll do a better job than him he was probably right but oh, i love that song it's a great, great song. song great song Right, and he also did on that album, Baby Driver, which I don't understand how that is not a hit. I don't get that. Great song. It's an amazing rhythm, the riff, the drums, the chorus. How is that not a hit? You know, it's awesome. I don't know. know. And then fucking awesome. Oh, and then he hit it out of the park on Love Gun, right, Zeus? Oh. Biggest Peter Chris fan, my least favorite song, Tommy's favorite song. That's insane. That makes so, no sense. And I love how he talks about Eddie Kramer really loves him. Yeah. And he talks about it in the book, even Behind the Mask. Um, behind the mask. Um, what do you call it there? The book. And in, 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 in his own book. He had a great relationship with Eddie Kramer. Yeah. And um, he really thought highly of him and thought highly of his drumming. And that's a great compliment. For a guy like Eddie Kramer and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So, and he did Hooligan. Yep. Because his grandma used to call him a hooligan. Love it. Oh. So oh. good. So, so good. So, what happened after that, Tom? Solo album. Oh. Hey, well, you know, go ahead. You, you go, go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Shoot. When, when um, I'm doing a solo album, I like you. I like your solo album. It's different. It's yep. not a Kiss album. Yep. It's different. I like it. I can listen to that. I do listen to that. I love that music. I do too. But, you know, like we talked about, when you're hanging out with your buddies, you're not going to play, you know, I Can't Stop the Rain in the middle of the, you know, you you, you want to play that hard rock song. But when you're by yourself and you're listening, you're like, God, this song is pretty catchy. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's like an AM soft rock type of album. Yeah, it is. And he excelled at that. That's a yep. fucking good album. It is. I think it's a really good album. Oh, I uh, agree. Totally. You know, it's just different style. I don't know why they shit on him. I give it a zero stars. Oh, thanks a lot, fucking Paul. You give it a zero stars? You did fucking hold me, touch me. I've told oh, I've said we you I, giving anybody a zero I, stars. I've said this before. All the hate. Gene has a brass set of balls to shit on Peter's album when you listen to some of the disasters that are on Gene's <laughs> album. And I'm not even Take talking about fault and throw it overboard onto the fucking ocean. Let Seriously. it sink. I mean, Gene, come on, dude. But anyways, go ahead. Yeah, it's just we. I don't. Know, I love it. So yeah. I'm a big fan of his album. Yep. This is when all the tensions go and all that. So we get into Dynasty, and he throws one song out there. One of the best. One of his best. Dirty Sanchez. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh, it's a great song. Yeah. So good. Yep. Yeah. It's singing about all the living in New York and, you know, you know, and, and then, you know, obviously well, we know what happens. So, yeah. is he, you know, he's still on the uh, album cover for Unmasked, but he obviously didn't, he wasn't a part of it. No. Nope. And right around that time, 1980, 
He's getting ready to do Out of Control, his first solo album. Well, before I'm that, 1980. Yeah, and right. But before that, though, the last time anybody really saw him and when he was with the band was that that Shandy video. Yeah, you know, remember, um, you know, the, the people try to say it's like conflicting reports about whether he whether he was fired or was he whether he left. But pretty much everybody says that he was. Fi- I think everybody agrees. That yeah, he was fired. I agree. He was fired because yeah. even Ace says it. Yeah, and um, um, Paul Paul has a pretty um, interesting quote. <clears throat> Excuse me, I believe I believe it's Paul. You know. Um, after the, 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 uh, the, the Shandy video, we shot a video for the song after the decision to let Peter go been confirmed. And he came to the video shoot, knowing it was the last time he would appear with kiss at the end of the day. He took his makeup case with him and left. It wasn't tearful, but it was a big moment. Peter was leaving. We had fired him. And this was the last time we were going to see him in the band. May 18th, 1980. That I was- think he was okay with leaving. Um, I yeah. think um, they were happy that he was gone. He was more of a headache to them. Yep. Um, you know, it is what it is. I don't think it was musically an issue. Whereas no. Ace and Kiss had problems with the music style and the direction. Yeah. I don't think there was ever a style like, oh, Peter's not doing this. or this. I just think they were tired of the work ethic, the butting heads about, you know. You know, and we'll get into the other stuff about Peter's personality and all the other stuff after this. Yep. But we're talking about the music first. Yep. So Peter goes, he's gone. So we don't hear from Peter until 96 in Kiss. Yep. Between that, he releases two more albums, 1982's Let Me Rock You with his bearded face. Um, was that him? Number one. Well, was that him or was that the Phil Donahue Peter Chris impersonator? <laughs> Why are you trying to ruin my life? <laughs> that when he came out, that... he looked like he belonged on the Los Angeles Kings from the 1980s <laughs> mullet hairdos. Oh, my God. Oh, dude, that story. Holy oh. shit. Ooh, him and Charlie Simma. 94's cat number one with the half makeup, remember? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, and then 96. Him and his daughter go see Kiss. Yep. At in Los Angeles the doing convention. the convention stuff. Yep. And then Kissery again. That's right. He's back, baby. I'm back, baby. Yep. And um, you know, he's back in Kiss. Yeah, and of and... course the, oh sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. no I was just gonna say they do the tour, they release Psycho Circus, and oh yeah, first album with the original band members, except Peter only played drums on one friggin' song. <laughs> He's saying lead oh, on one song. Brutal. I finally found my way to you. Brutal. Oh, and I, then he and then he I took, like it. Oh, go ahead. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know. But he also sang on You Wanted the Best. Oh, it's terrible. You got it. You got it. Oh. What is Ace's line? Because it's not your place. <laughs> Sounds like he's totally shit-faced during that song, which he probably was. It's not your place. <laughs> yeah. I'm Bob gonna... Bob Kraft. Just... Once again, Bob <laughs> Kraft makes it into the... Red so... balloon in the Patriots are all Patriots tonight. Let's not, ta- let's not talk about Bob Kraft right now. Bob <laughs> Hi, I want a red balloon. <laughs> Anyways, um, so okay. yeah, he sings half, not half. He sings a couple lines on You Wanted the Best, and he sings the ballad. I finally found my way to Ugh. you. Brutal. Okay, so he goes. They do the tour. And then they comes get sick of each other again. And, and then comes my favorite Peter story. Go ahead. Tensions arose once again. October 7th, 2000, at the end of the band show in South Carolina, Chris destroys his drum kit on stage. (laughs) Fans thought it was part of the act, but in reality, it was real. It was an act of frustration on his part. Are you fucking kidding me? You destroy your drum set like you're a five-year-old? What the fuck? Oh, my God. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Um, I hate these drums. I hate these stupid, stupid drums. <laughs> you fucking Daniel son. I hate it, was, it, was, bike. it was like Daniel LaRusso beating up his bike. I hate these drums. I hate these stupid drums. 
<laughs> well, hey. Um, <laughs> one against one, no problem. Five to one, too much. Ask anyone. Um. <laughs> What the fuck? I want to Miyagi. Miyagi detour. I don't know why. Uh, why? So, and so oh, he gets into it again with them. You know, they kick him out. He leaves for a little bit, comes back, does a live four with them. Yep. Then he leaves again. And, you know, it's a money issue. And then he thinks that Ace backstabs him because Ace got paid more than he did yeah. on the tour, even though they have the same manager. Now, as an attorney, <laughs> I can tell you, as whoever he has the same attorney for both people, that's what you call a conflict of interest. Oh, yeah. He should have sued his attorney for malpractice, and he would have won. There's no way that you can represent both people and have different amounts for different people and not tell Peter right off the bat they're paying Ace this without betraying Ace or without betraying Peter. So you would have to pick, hey, I can't be representing both of you unless right. you're coming as a, a package, and they weren't. Right. So that's called the conflict of interest. That guy should have been in trouble for doing that. Yeah. So he gets all bullshit. He thinks Ace backstabbed him for doing that. I don't think Ace backstabbed him. And like that video, fuck you, Ace. <laughs> the answer to every question is, I'm Ace Frilly, you're Peter Chris. <laughs> that's why I get paid more. <laughs> Everybody, your stupid question. You remember that? Yes. Oh, God. And anyways, and so Peter leaves. In the meantime, you know, he pops up from time to time. He writes his book, which yep. is awesome. And, you know, Before, sadly, yeah, go ahead. sadly, you know, when Ace was out of the band and Tommy was in, he doesn't bitch about it. Then when he leaves... And Eric comes in. Now he bitches about, oh, they're stealing my makeup. They're stealing me. I'm the. We know you're the original cat man. We know it, buddy. No one's taking that away from you. Yep. No one will be you in the band. They just the band is keep going. So somebody's playing that drum drummer part. Sorry, buddy. The band. I want to see the band play. I'm sorry you're not in it. I wish you were still in it, but between you and I, you ain't doing. You can't do it anymore like that. Yep. So come back. Uh, my, I would implore him, come back, play a couple songs every once in a while, be part of this farewell tour, and make the fans happy, you know? Yeah. But go ahead. You have something. <clears throat> no, I was just going to I was just gonna say on a, on a personal, um, like non-KISS-related Peter, um, this was huge because I'll be completely honest with you, I didn't even know this was a thing. But in 2008 um, – Peter Chris was diagnosed with breast cancer, yep. which, and he became a really outspoken um, advocate for like awareness because I'll be honest, with you, I did not know that was something that men could get. And, and then, yeah, and um, he mentioned it. Don't you remember in the the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yep. Um, he mentioned it. Yep. And plus, because I think this show was one of the best HBO shows of all time in the best HBO series, Oz. You yep. never watched oh, it. That's right. He was, yep. It is one of the best shows. He had a two, two episode arc. That's where he right. Played Marty Montgomery, where he had his typical New York. So every time anybody would go to prison in Oz, they'd always show the backstory. They'd show him, they'd be prisoner, so-and-so, so-and-so. And they'd say 10 years, assault and battery. In his episode, they show how he got a I was in odds. He's like fucking playing softball at a softball league. And he like he called somebody called one of his teammates out and he's yelling with the rat the umpire, and he's like, fuck you, fuck you. And he, the, the hump takes up, turns around, and Peter takes a fucking bat and starts bashing his brains. <laughs> Probably based on reality. Anyway, so he's in that show. And he does a pretty good job. He has a, hey, O'Reilly, yeah. me and you, we're going to have a different, hey, the commission's going up. He has a pretty good job. He's a fucking dick, in the, like, you know, on the show, as all the characters are. He's a two-story arc. He does a great job. And it's funny because in that show, right around that time, one of the inmates, the one that he has the beef with in that show later on, is a guy, and he develops breast cancer. 
Really? In that epi- yeah, in that show, right around that time. Wow. So I wonder if Peter had something to do with that. Interesting. But the creator is a big Kiss fan and big Peter Chris fan, too. Yeah. So he had him come on. It was awesome. He did a great oh, job. Cool. He nice. had a couple other acting gigs along the way, too, small roles. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. but you got to see Oz. He was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Anyways. So, so, so where do couple- we go? Go, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, go ahead. So a couple things I want to do is just, we talked about him musically and chronologically, and we're talking about members as far as Kiss is concerned, yeah. right? Yeah. So we talked about his music. Let's talk about, you know, the makeup and the character. Yeah. You know, he became the cat man yep. because of the nine lives, and he's a fucking crazy New Yorker, got into fights. He liked to brag about all the gang fights he would get into, stabbed a few times and this and that. So he had nine lives and he became the cat man. Obviously, his makeup probably changed the most in the in the middle of the kiss makeup era. No, oh, cover shit. to cover. Dude, go look at the go look at their debut album. I know, that's fucked up. And they said they let somebody's the first time he let somebody else do his makeup and it would yep. never happen again. Yep. It's yep. all fucked up. Yep. Um I think the final makeup that he has is awesome. Oh yeah. I j- you know, the and the image of Peter that I have in my head at his prime. Uh, never mind the when he looks badass in Love Gun cover. Oh, looks badass in um, in Destroyer cover. He's fucking jacked. Oh yeah. Um, I I have the image of him from the Shore No Something video. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Where he's just drumming along, like grooving, yep. playing the drums, a nice beat, and he's and he's actually got a smile, kind of winks at yeah. the camera a little bit, and he's got that fucking. 70s Carol Brady hairdo. You know oh, what yeah. the Bob he has on? He's like, yep. doo, doo, doo. moving oh, his yeah. shoulders. And he's, told, and he's, he's got the little shoulder shimmy yeah, with the feet. Yeah. Moving to the song. Yep. 17. And he's just like going, yep. Um, oh, he just looks, that's the Peter I have in my head. And I'm like, why didn't that band at that fucking moment, imagine if they could put five good years and five albums just like in that era. More. I know. I know. Oh, that would have been so fucking awesome yeah but that's the image i always have of peter in my head yeah um as we've talked about in the past buddy he's my favorite even as a kid we'll put the little zeus fucking photo of me wearing him in for uh for halloween yeah i love the green color on him i love the image i love the i love this attitude well and then don't forget and then one of the most iconic well it's 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 peter and but you look at that alive too when that stage goes up and you get those two gold cats yep. coming up from the drum riser. Yeah. Like how fucking badass is that? Like, oh, so cool. You know, yeah. so so awesome. And I wish we could hear his voice in Phantom of the Park, too. Oh my yeah, but it's just, we got hey, we're just ordinary people. <laughs> yeah, he sounds like a friggin' Scooby Doo villain, because I think he was, because it was made by Hanna Barbera. I think he sounds like fucking Norton. It's hey, Fred. Norton. I think it's like Fred from the Mystery Machine. <laughs> <laughs> we're just ordinary. Over. We're just we're just God. ordinary human beings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, Ruffy boy. <laughs> oh God. Anyways, that's my favorite from it, you know. And um, I, I, I don't know. He's just. It's that voice. In the end, it's that voice. It yep. fucking kicks ass. That raspy voice, that screech that he does, nobody can do that. That's different. Yeah. Give a fuck how much Eric Carr does it. I don't give a fuck how much Eric Singer does it. They don't sound a thing like Peter. No. Okay. No. Can they do a decent job? Yeah. But they're yeah. not. That's not Peter Chris up there doing that. Fuck that. No. Nope. So I don't know where this. Oh, Peter's deaf. Oh, he couldn't carry a tune. Oh, you couldn't do anything. He could. Oh, he sure sings pretty well when I hear him. Yeah, I don't. That's just that's just like insecurity. That's like why that, do you that's have just, to shit on him like yeah, that? Like it, I don't like. How do you say that and expect to see him next time? Like, hey, what's up, buddy? What is it? You know, just forget dude, about. That's like, why. Look, I'm on, I'm on an island here. Everybody, including you, you 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 guys think you're gonna see Peter and Ace on this tour? Well, I do. Not, okay, I it's do. I gonna, think he's gonna be there in New York. Never gonna happen. I but, think he's gonna show up in New York. You haven't heard anything. I think he's gonna be there and come out and sing Beth. That's yeah. That's think, the only thing. I think that's the only Eric Singer is going to be playing the piano, and right behind him is going to come out Peter Chris, and he's going to and Eric Singer is going to stop for a second. Wait a minute, this isn't right. Hold on, and all of a sudden Peter Chris is going to come out with a towel and give that out sounds, roses and sing it. What? While Peter, while Eric Singer plays, that would be awesome. 
Oh yeah, Are you kidding? Sounds, me? It sounds you know good. what would happen then? Then Ace would look like a dick. Because Ace is a dick. Because <laughs> it's not your play. Yeah, exactly. Fuck uh, him. Any thoughts you want to talk about, Peter Chris? I just, just that, like you said, that Love Gun, that Love Gun album cover. Um, when I think of him, and then that those iconic images from the Alive Two Love Gun tour, that drum riser. Um, like I said earlier, him on that, him on that stool with the towel and the rose, um, mm-hmm. you know, and then there's also another image too, that I think of, um, and I think it's on the very first Kissology, that black and white winterland co- uh, concert yep. when he's banging away and the drum kit looks so small and the whole thing is shaking as he plays it. Cause it, look, oh. it almost looks like it's not meant to take the beating that it's that he's given it. Um, yeah. just, a, just an awesome scene right there. I mean, that whole winterland show to begin with is one of my all time favorites anyway. Oh, but, I love that. I yeah. do absolutely yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, you know, and in the end, Peter is, you know, unfortunately the, the lowest on the totem pole, when you go to the original four, not for me, not for me. No, and I don't think you so. hear him talk. When you hear him talk nowadays, yeah, he sounds like a man that is, so grateful of what he had in life and oh, all the totally, goodness and totally. grateful for the fans that come up to him yep. and are th- like tell him what he's meant to them. Like, I correct. Think he really appreciates. Maybe at one point he didn't. He's at peace and, now with all that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think he sounds so appreciative and he loves the fans. Um, you know, and you know, unfortunately the other part of Peter, which we really haven't talked about. Cause I don't think, I don't think it, defines him as a human but you know obviously he had his drinking and drug problems which led to a lot of the downfall you get all the fucking cocaine he was doing all the paranoia i'm better and then you get your hanger-ons telling you you're better you don't need to put up with this shit and so was he kicked out of the band probably yeah but he probably didn't give a shit at that point because he thought he was better anyways probably you know it just it's too bad um and it sounds like he's cleaned up his act he sounds like his third wife, I believe, has really helped him out. Um, his first wife um, has done a lot. She's around in the Kiss world, right, doing a lot of stuff in the conventions and stuff. Sounds like a very nice person. Yeah. Took a lot of stuff in the part of the band in the beginning. Um, that's Lydia, right? And then he married the Playboy. Yep. And she was around <laughs> when, uh, what do you call it? Um that whole imposter came out. He oh, brought yeah, yeah. Episode. yeah, the, yeah the, no, it, it reminds me that. And Paul's like, shit, oh, yeah. How long will she be around? And Paul was like shitting on him. Like, she's a playboy money. Was she, I wonder if she'd marry you if she knows you were the ex-drummer of Kiss. Like, I why know. the fuck do you have to say shit like that? Again, Paul, yeah. like, people didn't use you because you were in Kiss, too? Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, why, like, there are yeah. things sometimes they yeah. do that's yeah, so, but- like, Unnecessary. Yeah, the girls would be all over Stanley Eisen if he wasn't in fucking Kiss. <laughs> well, Gene Simmons is a handsome man, a handsome and powerful man. You know, it just there are things they do to these guys they don't need to do. So at some point, I got to think that Peter and Ace drove those two fucking anal retentive fucking you know perfectionists. Oh, up don't the forget wall. too. Don't forget too. We forgot to bring up something. Remember when Peter and Ace did the Bad Boys tour? For a little bit. For a little yeah. bit. Remember that? Yeah. And then I remember when they were talking about, uh, um, I think it was, I saw the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yep. Afterwards, Ace is the only one that came out and talked to the press afterwards. He was the only one. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know, Bob's got a problem with everybody. I, I don't know. Hey, are you going to play with Peter? No. <laughs> No, hey, I got my own. I got a good solo career. In other words, like, yeah. I don't fucking need that shit bag. <laughs> I know. Dude, what the fuck? No, I, I got a good solo career going. I don't need him. He's got his own thing. I, I got mine. I'm in the solo. I got a concert tour coming out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and correct me if correct me if I'm wrong. Has Peter said one word since the end of the road tour was even announced? Has anybody nope. got an interview I've out of him? Shit, nothing. I am telling you, he's gonna come out. But what? But nobody has even sought him out for an interview. That's bizarre to well, me. He's, he's living his life. He's happy. You know, I'm telling you, I believe he'll be out for a song or two. Maybe if, if you're him and the kiss says, "Come out for a, we'll pay you so much money. Come out, sing a couple songs. We're in your neighborhood, Peter. We'd love to honor you. A couple songs. Why not? Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. Take that money. Put it aside for your grandkids someday, buddy. I know. So, you know, I don't know. Um, Peter was our first member episode. Um, he has, you know, songs in the 20s, the pen out anal we're going to get, whether he's a co-writer or anything like that. I so stu- let's go down the list, buddy. Yeah, I stu- I made my, uh, we did a top 10 list, right? Yeah. And I, I made my top 10 list of songs that lead vocals, Peter Chris. That was the rule I used for my top 10 list. Um, oh. So, what's that? Oh, that's how you did yours. That's not how I did mine. That's okay. Yeah. That, does, that, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Um, all right. So we're going to do it. And uh, do you want to go first or should I go first? Uh, we're going to go from 10 to 1 in reverse order, obviously. So you can start with your number 10. I'm starting with my number 10. Yep. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go my number 10. And that's uh, this song. Strange Ways. Love that song. Man, listen to him wailing there. That's so awesome. Right? Yep. I just yep. think that that's uh, something different. It's a different style of song. It's Ace's song. That's why. Uh, I think it's fantastic. It's a good way to start. And I believe you're up. So I will play your number 10. First of the solos, Tom. I love it. I know it's kind of disco-y and poppy. Um but I, I love it. That, I mean, that's something that could be like on the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. It's just a, it's a cool song. I like, I like disco anyways, a poppy kind of stuff with the keyboard and the little synthesizer. Cool, very cool song in my opinion. I know I'll probably take a beating for that, but that's okay. <laughs> I like it. Well, if you're gonna take a beating for that, I'm gonna take a beating for this one. Okay, this Uh-oh. is my number nine, buddy. Don't let me find you sleeping with another man. That Jesus. Is that is one of the more underrated opening lyrics to any kid yeah, song. It's like, <laughs> but if you do, you're still going to forgive her? Like, what the fuck is that? If you do, I'm going to go Oz on you with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me find you sleep with another man. Because it, like, it's like, don't let me be, don't be late for practice. Don't let me find you sleep with Like, it's no so nonchalant. Oh, oh I, I, but uh, I like it. It's a nice way to start the album. It's a great, but, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good but one. Yeah, so, it's got that. Peter Chris, someone on the piano. What's his name from the Muppets again? Rolf. <laughs> Rolf. <laughs> like Rolf and his barber fucking quartet hat on playing the piano in the fucking album. Oh man! Uh, so, so my my num- my number nine is my number nine is Strange Ways, which was your number ten. So we'll go yeah. we'll go to your number eight. My number eight. Um. All right. All right. Um, my number eight, um, Tom, is a song I'm not sure you've ever heard before as a Kiss fan. Okay? Here, here you go. Well, I was going to put in the Phantom of the Park edition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the acoustic one. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go with, um, with uh, what do you call it here? Um, Beth. I mean... It's Peter Chris, so technically, I think people would expect you to put that as number one. It's just fatigue. I don't even have it in my top ten. Wow, and that's that's probably fatigue, though. You're right. Uh, uh, it's still number- when you close your eyes and you hear it, it's a great song. Still, it is a. Gr- I agree. You know, I it's agree. a beautiful song. It's just fatigue. That's yep. it. Yep. So I don't want to punish it because of that and just forget how good it really is. You're right. Um, but it's just a great song. Yep. Um, so now we're up to your number, number eight. eight. Yep. I think this is it, right? Yep. Okay. Rags, a sailor's <laughs> only daughter. Now I, I never understood the rags part. What the I fuck think does it that means mean? like she she's like she's just like a poor girl, like she's a hard luck woman. She just doesn't have a lot, I guess. Rags. What's that mean? I, I, <laughs> I don't know. What do you know. say? Handbag. <laughs> you say uh, dryer towels. Like, what does rags mean? Great song. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It's just, you know, um, I, 
I just don't get it sometimes. Not any, um, not either. So we're up to my number seven. Okay. My number seven, uh, and this is it. That song. Oh, Love it. So uh, It's awesome. Right? It's so good. The whole freaking oh, album's perfect. Yeah, about this in New York City. It's oh, just yeah. very underrated. So number seven for you. Oh, this this might um, be a, this might be an interesting one. I, I don't care. I love this. I. <laughs> <laughs> what? I just, we have such different dates. Go ahead. Oh my God! Here we go. I think this is your number seven. Yeah. Yep. I think it is. Okay. Oh God! Oh, what a great groove. <laughs> Get the background singers, the chorus. Ah, I know it's a cover, but it's so good. I love the vibe. Oh, oh I love I it. I was tossing salad all oh, night. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> I think of tossing oh. salad all night. Um, Yeah. All right. That's why we're here. Different opinions. Yes. Uh, it's definitely different opinions. Yes. Yes, the crowd seems to love it. <laughs> um, all right, so we're up to number six for me. Okay. 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 Okay, all right. Let that play a little longer. I wanted it to play to hear that. Damn, damn, damn. That guitar is so fucking awesome. I and can't believe part, that Paul that, and Peter got. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is just awesome. I can't believe you have this song that low on your list. Because the other songs are just so great, too. Okay. All right. Um, I fucking love that part. Oh, it's great. For some reason, that guitar part, that... Awesome. I have this image of somebody, like, I can't explain it. I, I'll tell you off the air of what it reminds me of, an image of somebody playing that part. Okay. Uh, it's just fucking, I can't explain it. It's okay. this funny face I picture. Okay. Um, anyways, so... Let me think. What is the next song we up to, buddy? Number six for me. Uh, number six for you. Oh, this is probably your number. You go this. This is probably your number one. <sighs> yeah, hold on a second. I got to get it set up. Ready okay. to go? Yep. Go ahead, buddy. Oh, but it's just a great. It's a great song. The whole. I mean, I, I know that's one of your favorites, and I'll be surprised to see we have it ranked. But um, I don't know. I love it. It's just just cool vibe, good rhythm. You know, his voice sounds great as usual. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like it. I know you love People it. People may but... not know that I am not a man of narcotics. So <laughs> that being the, I said to you the other day, what the fuck is Mainline anyways? Is that someone's name? You're like, dude, Mainline's like a slang in the 70s for like heroin. And I'm like, the fuck is Kiss singing about heroin? What? Now, I, now, now I, I don't know if that's what he's referring to, but when I hear the term mainline, that's yeah, what I... That's that, what I would take it as, baby, give it to me one more time. Right, that's what I think of. I mean, like, it would make... It makes sense to be about that. Right. But what the fuck right. is Paul and Peter and Peter singing about Paul writing a song about doing fucking heroin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But, I mean... I didn't know what Mainline's all about. I mean, like, I was just like, is that someone's name? What the, What is that story about? Um, so, I I can't say enough about that song. I absolutely fucking love it. So, moving on, we'll go to uh, my favorite from an album. Um, and that's uh, coming up right now. Let me uh, put it up for you, buddy. Here go we ahead. go. Love that song. That almost made my list. I it, I don't know how it didn't, but I, just something had to take make the cut, and that was one of them because I love that song too. Um, it, it always makes me think of the movie. What movie? Phantom. Oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> what movie? Oh the well, other Kiss movie. <laughs> well no, because I keep forgetting that the American version has like the cartoon music, and the European Attack of the Phantoms has the solo album music. Oh, so it's but you're right. I forgot, I, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, it makes me want to fight some monkey people. Exactly. Yeah, the space oh, apes. Hooked on rock and roll. And that's another one. It just reminds me of Rolf with his Barbara Quintet hat on. Oh, yeah. And oh. playing the piano on it. <laughs> right? Oh, oh, it's just fucking awesome. Yep. So we're going to your number five, Tommy. Which is Baby Driver, which you already played. Oh, that's right. Baby Driver. Yep. Great yep. pick. So now... So, 
we're at your number four. Yeah, we're at number four for me. So with number four for me, I picked this. Now I know what you're gonna say, but play, no, I, let me play it for a little bit. Oh, I know. I'll explain to you. I was gonna, okay? I was gonna, men- I was gonna mention this when we played mine, but I know what you're saying. Go ahead. A whole song in. So I just love how the drums come in afterwards. Yep, I, I was gonna mention that when I when, when we played mine. I'm glad I didn't. It's funky. I yep. just like it. Just comes in afterwards. I think the song I try. I've tried over times to listen to them together. Yep. Back to back. They are different, and they do call it remix technically if you look at it oh yeah um like most of the songs it's not discoized like strutter right. is but it's up there but i just like how the drums come in different so if i have a pick of hard luck woman i take hard luck woman double platinum okay so Good that one. is my okay. number four then my number four is dirty living which we've already heard on your end so now we're up to your number three yeah number three for me um give me a second here buddy okay Number three for me is this, and it's this version. Okay. Because there are always versions. Okay? So here we go. Version kicks fucking ass on a live. Love it. He just goes nuts. His wailing, his voice is just awesome. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I mean, it um, you know, like again, I stuck my my I, my rule was I stuck with lead vocals by Peter, but I I can understand why you have it's nothing Peter to lose. Song. It. It's yeah, Peter it's amazing. Song. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, it just sounds, and I've loved nothing to lose. I was gonna pick that. I was thinking about picking the unplugged version, where I like that as well. The so, the actual from Kiss the original album. Yep. The alive version, every version of nothing. I just think it's such a, such an underrated song. It's such a catchy song that if you didn't know any better, you'd be like, "Oh, that's a that's got to be a cover. That's not yeah. a kiss song, is it?" Oh, I know. I agree. Yeah. I used to always think it was a cover of something. They came yep. up with that. You got know. God, nothing to lose. Oh, it's just awesome. And he's so done good. such a great job with the vo- you know, the screeching and all. Oh, it just sounds awesome. Yep. So we're up to your number three. Here we go. Right. Yep. All right. What do you think? Love, love that song just absolutely kicks ass. I mean, uh, we said this during the Dress to Kill review. Just the the bass, the drums, just a great song. I don't know how, uh, you know. I'll keep repeating myself. I just don't know how that didn't become a hit. I don't get it. It's just so good. Yeah, um, I like the song as well. Yep, I think it's a good, very good song. Um, I think it's an A song, right? I think it is. Yes, right. I'm pretty sure. The, another one that he just gave to Peter to sing. Yep. And we talked about it on Dress to Kill. Good song. Yeah. Killer song. All right. So we're up to my number two. My number two is Mainline. Okay. We already did it. I love the song. Such a great song. And Peter does such a wonderful version of it. Oh. Yep. So uh, that's my number two. We talked about it already. So we got your we got- number two. Yep. I know what this is. Oh, it's uh, what else can you say about it? It's the the song is epic. I mean that 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 song is just it, it's one of the best, and I cannot wait to hear it live. Yeah, um, it's it's a classic, classic, classic. Could be their best song. Could be. You're right. What I described on Nothing to Lose, the same thing. When he goes nuts singing oh. it. Oh, it's just badass. As good as the other Eric, both of the Eric's do on it. It's not this. It's not Peter Chris doing it. No, I'm sorry. It's, it's no, just, I agree. Uh, it, it's, it's um, ama- yeah, it's amazing. So it, it's just such a, it just, it's, you know, it's ahead of, I just think it's ahead of all other Peter Chris songs. And that's why I have it as my number one. Okay. But I don't have that version. I have this version, Tom. Okay. Fucking good is that song. Yeah. I mean, that, that live version, ugh. It, it, it's another reason why why the Alive album is just amazing. You know? It, yeah, it's 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 awesome. I mean, I, you know, I hate to sound like a fanboy, yeah, but that's what we are. It's just awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's If that doesn't move you, like I, I've always said, Go listen to Black Diamond and tell me that Kiss isn't talented as a band. Of course. Tell me that, like, you know what I mean? 
somebody yep. can listen to almost human laugh right. or fucking, uh, I don't know, read my body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go play Black Diamond. Tell me that's not a classic rock song. Yep, I know. And tell me that the band, the music, the way that starts off slow and picks up, or Paul s- setting it up, the live version with the guitar slowly coming into it. Oh, you remember the real part, the beginning guitar part. Oh, it's just so beautiful. It just, it's such a badass song. It's just. Oh. And here we go with my number one that you don't even have on your list. Oh, love it. Love that song. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of nostalgia there because I told the story about Love Gun in the past, how I got the album when I was real little. Um, It was my first album, my favorite album. But I love that guitar riff, how it kicks in. I like the drums, the the kind of a weird little beat that he has there with it. Yes, the lyrics are ridiculous. We know that, but... (laughs) Musically, that's always been my favorite Peter song. I love it. Uh, I know. Doesn't even make my honorable mentions. I, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I, that's, and I have a few right. of those. I mean, I, look, Hooligan, do I turn it off? No. It's not, like, unbearable. Right. But it's just, of all his songs, I don't know. I mean, I like the part that he talks about, like his grandma used to call him a hooligan. Just, if I had a nickel, I'd buy some more. It's just... Yep. I, I don't know. I mean, in, in, in just the word hooligan. Like, who's called a hooligan? <laughs> I know. You know, a fucking soccer hooligan? That's all I think of. I love you it. Know, some British guy going around grabbing a kid by his ear. You little hooligan. Choking you know, people just, in a soccer oh, game. Fucking. Oh, I love it. Dresses that shoes. Oh. <laughs> I've got a couple honorable mentions, Tom, for me. Okay. That's the kind of sugar Papa likes. Okay. I finally found my way. Oh, stop it. Are you serious? This is New York. I can't stop the rain. Brutal. Kissing time, because I love his lyrics. Uh, Baby, don't you let me down. down. That's that's actually not bad. That's it. Those are mine. My my honorable mentions would actually be um, two songs off of Unplugged. The Nothing to Lose on Unplugged. Un- and, uh, unbelievable and the rock and in the rock and roll all night from unplugged peter, peter! exactly <laughs> i love i love i love him yeah i just get i just get overwhelmed with like nostalgia when i hear those and when i see the video that mtv unplugged i it's just i love it or the outtakes when ace is trying to learn doesn't know the fucking words to it oh uh, what's that what's the pot again yeah and <laughs> <laughs> where's my grammy Oh, he didn't even know the fucking words to his part in the song. I'm gonna fucking teach him. <laughs> hey, Tommy, get in hold my fucking shoes. Oh, oh, dude, he had to teach you how to play rock and roll all night. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, man. So that's a fucking great, great list. Uh, oh. Thank you, uh, Peter Chris, for giving me all this wonderful Kiss music. Yep. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about the solo albums of his, maybe a solo career in a different episode. But this was Peter Chris Kiss. Yep. And um, the Peter Chris Spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The hooligan episode. <laughs> exactly. So, Tom, uh, we're not going to really do questions this week because a lot of the stuff we got was a few comments about the about the tournament. OK. All right. So what do you do? You have something? I, no, no, I thought I, we had. No, no. Actually, we yeah. And most of the questions were about the tournament. But go ahead. I got one from – this was from our uh, Shout It Out Loudcast at gmail.com, our email you yeah. can use us. I don't know if he typed his own name wrong, but it's – the guy's name is Billy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but I feel – I don't want to laugh because if he's listening, I'm going to feel like a piece of shit. It says his last name is – his name is Billy Burbader. <laughs> Tommy's all red. What is that funny to me? Burbador? Burbador? I really hope. Yeah, I really hope he had fat fingers and he typed his name wrong. Because if not, we're the worst people in the world. I'm sorry. I don't mean. Dude, people butcher my name. They butcher your name all the time too. So we shouldn't talk. 
<laughs> maybe it's per, maybe I'm supposed to be saying it differently. I don't know, but I, I all right. I'm not gonna look. Burger. Right. Yeah, but, but I don't know. Uh, is, it right. the, is that guy the Mayor Pete from? Uh, is that who that is? I, I don't know. His name is Bur Bur whatever his name is too. Oh, but he he I asks. Know. He he must be a new listener. If that's the case, he probably won't listen anymore after hearing this. <laughs> Perpeter. Because ahead. he asks about where we came up with the idea for the tournament. Now, that was our previous episode, Mr. Berbader. <laughs> so, <laughs> why do you have to say it like that now? Now right. you're just saying it like you're mocking him. The all right, bastard. I'm sorry. We, all why right. do I have to call him a bastard, too? All, all right. What the fuck is wrong with us? No, but real, real quick, I mentioned this in the previous episode. It's March Madness, and, I, and through Twitter and Facebook, I see all kinds of tournaments. Um, so we said, let's do a oh, kiss yeah. one. You know, yeah, exactly. So, did you have anything? Yeah, I had. Uh, mine isn't as funny. Stan from Twitter asked us, "Say, how did you come up with this list and not have makeup? Not makeup. And if you did, what would those seeds be?" Oh, well, that's the thing. So we kind of mean you came up with this. We started going by albums. By the time we we talked about this last time, by the time we got to like. Friggin' rock and roll over. We had like 50 songs. Oh, yeah. There's no way we could add chronologically, we're gonna add makeup. They just wouldn't. So we came up with let's do a non a makeup one. And then guess what? We'll do a makeup non-makeup one next year. Yeah. Do I want to give away the number one seeds? No, because I don't want to think about we're still dealing with this pool. Right. So I we'll come up with number one seeds. So we're our our goal is to do it this year, see what wins. Next time we'll do the non-makeup tournament. Yep. Guess what? The third year, we'll add the makeup ones and the non-makeup ones and put them together and get a whole kiss one. Yep. And we can eliminate a lot of the stragglers. Yep. Right? That's what we're thinking of doing. Um, and we're having so much fun with this. We'll make it fun again for the non-makeup songs. Oh, yeah. And hopefully we can get our friend Jericho involved and he'll jump in. Perfect. Absolutely. Right? Yep. So that's it for our... Uh, questions famous last words tommy i got a 35 chevy on a 55 frame can't even spell my name <laughs> when, did you, when did you drop out of school when i was 22 <laughs> which by the way why the fuck are you still in school when you're 22 because i'm a hooligan <laughs> exactly and i won't go to school again <laughs> Tommy, what do you got? Oh, this weekend, I know we're, you know, we're going away. If we meet some lovely ladies there at the, uh, at the concert, I'm going to tell, walk up to the first good looking girl and say, but you're the kind of sugar Papa likes. And when we do it, it drives me crazy. And like Booger in Revenge of the Nerds 2, I'm going to repeat that line to see how many times I get slapped in the face. Well, it's, it could have been worse. You could have went up to him and say, don't let me catch you sleeping with another man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, on that note, one other thing I want to throw out there for all you listeners in the Boston area. We're going to be at these concerts. We're going to have our shirts on. Feel free to tweet at us. Send us an email. If you're going to be there, we'd love to say hello to everybody, right? Yeah, absolutely. The, the Mohegan Sun in the Boston, the Garden one. Yep. How do you get a hold of us? Tom? Uh, we are all over the major podcast platforms, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, Podomatic. Um, we have, we are like, obviously very active on Twitter. Uh, we have, uh, Instagram, we have Facebook. Uh, those are the ways Tom's to reach a huge fan of Facebook. Th what's that? <laughs> You're yeah. a huge fan of Facebook, yeah. Facebook. Yeah. We're there though. We're there. Uh, and then, oh, you can always get us on our email, uh, shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Yep. You want to hit us up. If you want to see us at the concert, we want to meet up, talk, kiss, Maybe uh, get together and fill each other up. Um, <laughs> we can uh, we can do that at these concerts. 
Uh, don't forget, don't be a stranger. Keep voting in the tournament. The Makeup Madness tournament continues. Definitely. Um, thank you. And uh, till next time, Tommy. We will see you guys soon. Thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout. <laughs>